thanks so much for joining us for this live hangout. Today we're going to be talking about DOCSIS pre-equalization and new uh, diagnostic tools that are now available for that standard. Uh, my guest today is Brady Volp, uh, founder and president of the Volp Firm. Welcome, Brady. Thank you, Scott. Uh, by the way, if you're on Twitter, feel free to use the hashtag ZCORUM. That's Z-C-O-R-U-M. Uh, you can discuss the topic, and if you have questions, uh, Brady and I will answer those shortly after the Hangout. Um, first off, Brady, uh, there may be some people who are tuning in that aren't familiar with the concept of pre-equalization in DOCSIS. Can you give us a, a quick rundown of what that technology consists of? Sure, Scott. So pre-equalization is a, a really cool feature with DOCSIS. It's been around pretty much since the beginning of DOCSIS. And it's, it's actually something that is in DOCSIS cable modems. And it's put there in order to help compensate for upstream impairments between the cable modem and the CMTS. So basically what happens is if there's some type of impairment between a cable modem and CMTS, maybe there's a corroded center seizure screw or a kink in the coax, something that's going to cause like maybe a micro reflection or some group delay, the CMTS will see that the signal coming from the cable modem has degraded and the CMTS will have problems demodulating that signal so normally if you have pre-equalization turned off you're going to get some uncorrectable code word errors or uh, you know problems receiving the signals from the cable modem so what happens if you turn on pre-equalization the CMTS is going to see this and it's going to communicate back with the cable modem and say you know I want you to sort of pre-distort that signal before you transmit it to the CMTS and, and basically it compensates for those upstream impairments so when that signal arrives at the CMTS it's going to uh, basically adjust for those, those ugly things that are happening in the plant between the cable modem and the CMTS so when the RF signal gets to the CMTS it's going to be in nearly pristine condition so that pre-equalization can make a dramatic improvement for upstream SNR levels or MER levels for all the upstream signals from cable modems when they arrive at the CMTS. And I would assume that would also uh, improve uh, correctable and uncorrectable code word errors on the upstream side as well. Exactly. When we enable pre-equalization in the CMTS, which is normally just a, a one-line command for up each upstream interface, we see SNR get better, we see a dramatic decrease in correctable and uncorrectable code word errors, so you know, it's, a, it's a great thing to turn on. Well, given that, and, and given that everybody wants better performance out of their cable system, is there any reason not to enable it on a CMTS? So there's two schools of thoughts on, on why people sometimes don't want to turn on pre-equalization. Uh, we, you know, we can say, oh, let's, let's turn on pre-equalization, we get this great performance imp 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 improvement in our upstream, and, and a lot of cable operators are, are turning it on across the board, and they're seeing that. Uh, but there are people, our cable operators, who are really concerned about turning it on because it does have a tendency to mask those impairments because you know the cable modems will show great upstream SNR, MER, we won't see the code word errors, and really what's happening is we tend to mask the upstream impairments where we won't see what's going on in the plant because the cable modem is pre-equalizing the signals going to the head end and we're not going to see them until things get really really bad almost until we fall over the cliff and the cable modem goes offline so those are kind of what happens uh, when we're thinking about you know, should we turn it on should we not turn it on oh, okay that's interesting um, what happens in a scenario where I've got, uh, and this is pretty common, a CMTS that has still has DOCSIS 1.1 modems as well as newer 2.0 and 3.0 modems? How does that interact with turning on pre-equalization for that upstream or, or upstream bonding group? So, DOCSIS 1.1 modems, um, and when we talk about the difference between 1.1 and 2.0 and 3.0, there was sort of a, a difference in technology between them. DOCSIS 1.1 modems have uh, we start talking about they have eight taps, so which means they have a limited ability to do pre-equalization. And we, when we talk about taps, we're actually talking about you know not the kind of tap that is a mainline tap where we run a, 
a coax drop going into the house. We're talking about the architecture of the equalizer structure itself. This is like getting into digital signal processing. 2O and 3O modems have 24 taps. So, you know, 24 is better than 8. That, what that really means is that 24 taps, we have more capability to do that pre-equalization, to actually pre-distort the signal before it's sent to the CMTS. Now, there's been a lot of discussions and arguments about whether or not DOCSIS 1.1 modems do a very good job at pre-equalizing uh, the data, the signal before it's sent to the CMTS, and so that's always been a concern as to whether or not we should turn on pre-equalization and put DOCSIS 1.1 modems. No. Uh, Brady, tell us, uh, tell everyone about the the group that you've been working with at Cable Labs, and uh, and and how the P and M uh, evolution occurred there. Yeah. So there's a uh, you know a group of really smart people at Cable Labs uh, that, that formed a group a number of years ago called P and M. It was Proactive Network Maintenance, and and they got together with other folks, other cable operators, and and they said you know. We have this, this pre-equalization capability in cable modems, and it's doing a great job for us. It's improving upstream SNR, but we should be able to look at this pre-equalization data and learn more, do more with it. And, and that's exactly what they did. They figured out, you know, we could look at it, we can find out where impairments are, what type of impairments are, and uh, now the group is named Ingenious, and, and I love the name Ingenious because it, it does a much better job of describing, uh, you know, the, the sort of the, the intelligence behind the group and the really sharp people that are involved with it. Um, so they're continuing on using and in, improving the technology that's going on. They've got folks from Comcast, and Comcast is one of the you know leaders behind this P&M technology. They're deploying it and doing a fantastic job in changing the way that they approach network maintenance and how they, they find impairments in their plant using this P&M technology. And you know, it's, it, it really changes the way they deploy technicians because they're able to use P&M to find out if an impairment is in the home, is outside the home in a ground block, or is somewhere else outside in the plant. So it's it's just wonderful technology. That, that is very exciting. I mean, the idea that uh, that we can isolate a problem down to this is uh, you know 20 feet away from the subscriber, it's 50 feet away from the subscriber, and we really can lead technicians to precisely where they need to start looking. And now you're working with Zcorum to make a, a tool available that does this uh, pre-equalization uh, network man, uh, preventive network maintenance called pre-equalization analyzer for operators who don't have the development resources to uh, to build that on their own. Yeah, so uh, of course I'm I'm really excited about this. This is probably one of the most exciting applications that I've worked on since I've been in the cable industry. And you know we, we're taking the equalization data from the cable modems, we analyze that, we're able to look at in-channel frequency response and being able to you know, work with you guys and work with cable operators and make much more effective resource, uh, utilization of resources to say, okay, we can look at a cable modem. We can say, you know, oh, there's correctable or uncorrectable code word errors and see that this cable modem is showing up as a red cable modem. It has problems, we know that, but even further, we know this cable modem has micro reflections. You know, there's some impairment between the cable modem and the CMTS. Now, even beyond that, we can see how bad those micro reflections are, and then we can say these micro reflections are caused because there's something in the house, or maybe they're caused because there's something 50 feet outside of the house at the drop going into the house. Or maybe this problem is not anywhere near the house. It's located 1,500 feet away from the house. So this is tremendously powerful technology because we're no longer looking at a cable modem as a problem and saying, okay, let's blindly start fixing this problem. We can say, you know, we have a cable modem. We know there's a problem. And we can send a technician to within about 10 or 20 feet of exactly where that problem is. So this is really game-changing, industry-changing technology that we can provide to cable operators. And that is extremely exciting to be involved in this today. 
So one of the things that, that we should be able to do as well is, is look at cable modems that have similar pre-equalization coefficients, similar kinds of impairments in the plant, and see how those overlap. Is that something that uh, your tool does today? Yeah, so now we're getting into uh, an even more advanced capability, what we, it is called correlation. So, you know, if we think about the cable plant, it, it all goes back to the same point in the CMTS, common coaxial cable going back. And we could have maybe 10 or 20 or 30 cable modems off of a common piece of coax cable. And maybe there's a little squirrel sitting on top of that coax cable and it's chewing away at the coax cable and it breaks it open a piece of the coax cable. And then we get some water that leaks in and of course that's going to create an impedance mismatch. And depending on how much water is in there at a particular time, the cable modems are going to really suffer from problems. And that's when our, our correctable, un uncorrectable code word errors get really, really bad. Well, P&M is able to see that, and it can see when this group of 10 or 20 cable modems really start to have problems. Well, it's often difficult for us to see exactly where that's located. You know, we, we would almost have to walk along the, the coax cable and inspect every inch of it to find it. This is when the tool gets really, really powerful because it will group those 10 or 20 cable modems together, and it'll tell us exactly where with, within, you know, 10 or 20 feet of that coax span where the problem is. So we can send a technician to that piece of coax, we'll know exactly what subscribers are affected, why they're affected, and where's the span of cable to with, within you know, a really small distance. So we can pinpoint that on a map and say, go here, here's your problem, here's the span of cable, fix that cable, and we get those subscribers back online. So, or you know, if, if it's an intermittent connection, we're continually looking at it, uh, so, you know, again, it's, it's really exciting to see that because we are always dealing in the cable industry with intermittent outages, intermittent conditions, and being able to find those, identify, and know exactly where to go fix it and replace that coax, that's huge. That's, again, it's game changing. Oh, it, it is very exciting. And Brady, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Scott. And uh, I think we'll be talking again next week, right? That's right. For those of you who are NCTC members, Brady and I will have a more in-depth discussion uh, on this topic during an exclusive webinar next Tuesday, February the 11th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll also be doing a demonstration of the pre-equalization analyzer software. Uh, for more information about pre-equalization analyzer or the webinar, give us a call at 800-909-9441. Uh, thanks to everyone who tuned in today. Have a great day. Thank you all. Bye.